Hey, Measuring Hero, Jay here. Last time we came to Torah Castings to begin our journey to learn about the process of castings. Today we want to finish that journey, and so we came back to Torah Castings, this time a different facility, but we're here again with Simone. Simone, once again, thank you for uh, teaching us about the wonderful world of die casting. <laughs> thank you, and welcome back to Torah. So, Last time, as you remember, we were in the other plant of San, uh, San Paolo d'Argon. And here in this plant, which is in Carobbio, we have another technology, which is high pressure die casting. Uh, and also we have the, the department where we uh, machine the pieces. Okay, okay. Now, so here we're going to learn about high pressure, uh, but can you explain to us what's different and what's the same from what we saw last time, which was gravity and low pressure? Okay. Uh, Many things you will find exactly the same because as Tora, since we are certified as IATF, we are required to follow certain procedure and since many uh, stages of the process are the same, we, uh, we apply the same procedures. So for example, okay, here in Carobbio de Angeli we have only two alloys, while in Sao Paulo we had three. But, but regarding, for example, how we, we treat them, how we color code, how we put them in the furnace, it is just the same. What it, it really changes, it, it is the technology that we use to cast the pieces. Because in Sao Paulo, we have only gravity and low pressure. While here, high pressure means that we apply a huge amount of pressure to force the aluminum, the, the molten aluminum to to flow inside the die, and also we use a vacuum system to suck out air to facilitate the, the filling of, of the die. Also, in this technology, it is harder, and we do not use sand cores to, to fill the pieces, but there are other, other technologies uh, that are useful to create different shapes. So, when you compare low pressure and gravity with high pressure die casting, you don't really have to to see them as one technology which, which competes against the other. Actually, they, they feel two different needs according to the geometry of the piece and to the requirement of the customer. Okay, okay. Now, you mentioned that doing high pressure has a much higher throughput, right? Uh, a higher, sorry? Uh, uh, more pieces get generated oh, exactly. uh, at a time, right? So, how, um, how do you keep up with uh, such a high pace? A big difference of high pressure die casting from gravity die casting is that here the ratio of production is much faster. Therefore, first of all, the pieces cannot be removed from the die by the operator because this process would be too slow and the operator would not be able to keep up with the, with the production rates. So, we have an automatic arm which takes the pieces out from the die and it quenches them in water. And by doing so, there is also a, a laser check uh, which uh, inspects some of the parts, checking whether the piece is, uh, is complete or not. If it is not, it is already automatically scrapped. And also the machine is able to automatically scrap the pieces. Also, if, for example, the machine detects uh, that some parameters are not okay, or if the machine was, uh, um, uh, was not in production for a few minutes, then automatically the first two, three pieces are scrapped. Then anyway, after the quench, if the pieces are compliant, are taken from the robot arm directly to the trimming tool. And this is another difference uh, with respect of gravity die casting, where the cut was, was performed manually in another department. Here the cut of the piece is, uh, is done just on the side of the machine by the trimming tool. Then the robot takes out the pieces from the trimming tool and gives them to the operator, which performs a visual check with a magnifying glass. And also we have a, an automatic control with, with a machine on the side, which checks, for example, whether uh, the, the, in, uh, the inner channel is empty or not. There is an, another laser sensor which does that. Then the pieces are separated from uh, the, um, for, for die and for the cavity of the dies, because in, in uh, high pressure, we often have multiple cavities in the same die, and then they are shipped to, to the next uh, stage. Got it, got it. All right, do you do any, um, uh, any periodic checks on uh, premises during the high pressure, uh, like you did uh, 
over in uh, the other one? Absolutely. Just like in the other plant, we uh, perform a chemical inspection all on the, on the uh, furnaces, on the, on the, mold, on the melt. Mm -hmm. And also we perform a visual check and also X-ray check, which is statistical. And we use, uh, once again, a very uh, old, but yet uh, it is perfectly uh, efficient uh, Bosello machine uh, that we use to quickly intercept problems in the pieces already in the foundry, so we can directly correct them as, as soon as possible. We do not use this machine to perform, for example, 100% XR check, which is performed somewhere else with another machine, but the, the quality operator in foundry has this instrument if they need got to. It, got it. Okay, so uh, the uh, process is done automatically, which is different from what we saw last time, uh, but then once it is uh, separated from cavity to cavity, and it's deemed good to move on, uh, what's the next process here? Uh, it, it really depends on what is the requirement of the customer. Okay. Sometimes uh, we send blast the, uh, the pieces and we have three different sand blasting technologies. Uh, they basically change only where the position of the turbine it is uh, and whether it is a grape or a continuous uh, movement, but basically it is sand blasting. And then uh, it is performed an X-ray check and also a final check for uh, remaining burrs uh, and so on. And uh, the sequence and the, the controls uh, actually depends on the requirement on the drawing and on the agreement with the customer. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so after sandblasting then, is it ready to ship? It depends, it depends on the customer because on the, in the past, we were used to supply our customer with the raw parts. But nowadays we are moving towards and uh, we think that the future of Tora is to supply to the final customer uh, pieces which are already machined, assembled, and tested. So uh, on the other projects, uh, yes, we, we supply them like that. And on the newer pro project, we bring them to the machining department where we machine them, we clean them with uh, the washing machine where we can check the, uh, the, the cleaning less. And then eventually we assemble the pieces with studs or gaskets and also we are able to perform the leakage test. Ah, cool, cool. And then of course, if you just go ahead and do uh, raw castings, you'll maybe do 100% inspection on a uh, Definitely. On a machine if like it is this. agreed with, with the customer we, and on safety parts, for yeah. example, we need to, to perform 100% inspection of, on the pieces. Yep, yep. And again, thank you for choosing Seiss, uh, Bocello Seiss machines You're welcome. for the quality of your This is actually part. a very new machine. We have both it last year and uh, so far it is perfect. So thank you once again for your time uh, explaining to us a little bit about Tora Castings and to teach us about what it takes to be a high-end casting manufacturer. Thank you very much. Yeah, yep. Simone, It thank was you. a pleasure. We'll see you soon. And for you out there, hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to stay safe and stay healthy. And we'll see you next time.